This video is going to cover filter design using the built-in filter wizard. We will then generate the schematic and do a regular analysis. And we will finish by upgrading the analysis from schematic to a full electromagnetic simulation just to verify the solution. So we will start with the wizard um, on the project tab, wizards. I filter filter synthesis. Double click, design, and we are going to do a low pass microstrip filter. We're going to use the distributed stubs version, and we're going with the double radial stubs. Say OK. And this is the basic design. We have seven poles. The low pass filter will pass up to 2000 megahertz or two gigahertz. We can see the performance here. It's automatically created. Um, we can take a look at the layout. Uh, the other thing we need to check before we generate the circuit is the substrate definition, and that's under design options. We go to technology. And here we have uh, 4.45 is uh, substrate FR4. The substrate thickness is 20 mils H defined here. And we have the conductor thickness, small t, is defined here. And 1.4 mils is one ounce copper. And finally, the loss tangent, 0 0.0031, that is correct for FR4. So these values are all correct. I'll say OK. And before generating, the final thing I want to check is the optimization goals. And here we can see the passband 0 to 2000 megahertz, stop band. So we're all good here. I'll say apply. The goals just appeared here. And they will also be sent to the schematic when I generate it. To create the schematic, I just click on Generate Design. I'm going to call it um, Low Pass Filter. And I want to include the optimization goals. So we'll say OK. And then I'll say OK here to close the filter wizard. But notice that when I do that, there's now a plus sign here. And I can go back to my design if I want to make any changes. So here is the schematic. Here is the filter performance based on the schematic analysis. And we can also look at the layout, which we saw earlier, just like what we saw. Now, one thing that we need to do is take a look here uh, for this substrate. Currently, the metal is defined as gold. Uh, if we look at the parameters for the substrate, rho, metal resistivity, normalized to gold. So one means gold. We want copper on our FR4. And the rho for copper is 0 0.7. So now we have the proper metal design. Uh, that change makes these graphs dim because they need to be reanalyzed. And there we go. So this is now copper analysis. And that's what we're going with. Now we can see there is an issue here in the stop band. So what I'm going to do is um, file the windows. Next, we're going to run optimization, simulate optimize. I can make this much smaller. And this is basically ready to go. Uh, so we will say start. And 29 iterations took just a couple of seconds. The cost or the error function is now zero. And we can see that both goals are completely met. So we're in good shape there. We can close the optimizer. And this is our filter design. Now, 
you can see that there are X's here because the parameters changed. So we can simply control A to select everything and snap it back together. So now the layout is correct. And there is a setting where you can have this automatically snap together. I'm not going to cover that here, um, but it is possible. Um, the final thing we're going to do is set up electromagnetic analysis because the schematic treats each of these as individual. But an electromagnetic analysis would also cover the possibility that these parallel or open stubs could be uh, coupling with each other, and that could affect the result. So we're going to see that. Now, one thing we need to know before setting up the electromagnetic analysis is the dimension of the narrowest line. And that's the through line. And to measure that, we can use Control D or click on the measure button. And here we can see that this line is 4.37 mils wide. We're going to round that up to five. And the reason I'm saying that is because with electromagnetic analysis, the mesh should be set to approximately 10% of the narrowest line. So I'm going to set it to 0.5 mils. Now, there are many ways to set up electromagnetic analysis. It could be done manually. You could copy the layout and then set that up manually. But there is also an automated capability and we're going to use that. So in order to set that up, we'll make the schematic the current window, go to scripts, EM, create stack up. And this window opens. This is where I'm going to set that mesh size to 0 0.5 mils. And I recommend keeping all three of these checked. We do that. Two elements are added. This is uh, what creates the EM structure. And this contains all the information that will be set up in the EM structure with regard to the substrate and materials and all that. So we can see copper, the substrate, it's all defined, dielectric layers, materials, etc. So all this is ready to go. The only thing we need to do now is uh, select all the distributed elements that are going to be sent to the electromagnetic simulation. And one thing to be aware of, when you select things, typically only those that are fully included will be selected. So here I should get only the transmission line between there. And there it is. But there is another option. If you hold the shift key, anything touched, it doesn't have to be totally selected. Anything touched or inside the box will be selected. And now all the distributed elements are selected. We're going to double click on any one of them, go to the model options, and enable EM extraction. And that means that all of these elements will be sent to EM. And if you want to check what's selected, just click on the extract block and both the schematic elements and the layout elements will turn red. Those are going to EM. So uh, I could run it, but when I do this, I typically check the EM setup before I run it. So I'm going to right click add extraction, and this is the electromagnetic setup. The layout is virtually identical. You can see the ports, and the A is an automatic port. It's going to add some mesh that will then be removed after the analysis, but uh, it's just a standard EM setup. And what we want to do now is check the mesh. So to do that, with the EM window open, 
show 2D mesh. Takes a second to set it up, and there we go. If we zoom in on the narrow line, we can see the 10%, and that is exactly what we want. This is the 0.5 mil mesh. The electrical field is heavily concentrated at the edges of transmission lines. That's why we put a small mesh here. And then it will, uh, in the middle, it will combine up to 10 into a single mesh because there's not a whole lot going on here from an electrical field standpoint. So this is ready to go. And basically all we do is, well, actually before I run it, let's uh, tile it again. And now we will run the analysis. So this is the EM window. Um, first thing it's gonna show us the setup, it's 12,000 unknowns due to the mesh. And now the analysis is kicking in. And we can see that going. Uh, this value where you see um, the error function, 5.9 right there, 8.8. .8. We need this to go better than minus 30 dB. So it's going to take a few simulations, um, but we'll get there in just a minute. You can see it's taking about six seconds per frequency. And I believe this is going to take approximately 20 frequency points to get below minus 30 dB. And to get all of these four uh, items properly solved. So we'll see that just a minute and there we go so this is the electromagnetic analysis and we can see that it's a little bit different than the um, schematic analysis but both goals are still totally met and if we want to compare these the easiest way to do it is this let's make the graph full screen um, there is a freeze and clear or thaw function. You can see the thermometer with a blue for freeze, red for thaw. I'm going to freeze the trace. Then we go to the schematic. I'm going to right click on the extract block and toggle it. That will effectively turn off the um, electromagnetic function. And when I run the analysis again, that's the schematic analysis. So the bright curve is schematic. The dim curve is electromagnetic. Slight differences, but both have totally met the goals. And this is our completed filter analysis. For more tutorials, visit us at resources.ema-eda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.